Hello and happy Monday all. Welcome to Martial Motion here with Mind Movement. Coach Mike here to go through our session, session one series of movements here. And we're going to start in Seiza position. Um, from here, we're going to move through a series of yogic movements and then work our work, our work ourselves to an upright position. Okay. So let's go ahead and start um, at the bottom of your mat. Okay. Tops of the feet to the mat. So we can allow ourselves space to work ourselves forward. From there, we're going to say so. I'm going to bring hand and hands in my lap, keep my posture upright. And let's go ahead and check into our breathing and how it relates to our body. Okay, check in our body in general, bringing our heels towards our hips. Posture stays really upright and a slight lowering of the chin. Still keep that spine nice and tall. We take the air in to the lungs via the nose. Expand the rib cage. And exhale through the mouth. And here as we start to even visualize our breathing as we take it in a lot of that cool is coming through the nose all the way through to the base of the lungs and expelling warm air from the lungs As things start to creep in into our minds, just see it for what it is and let it go. As I say, in through the nose, finding that nutrition, what serves us, taking into the body. Our body begins to use it, and through our exhalation. Letting go of what no longer serves us. And as inevitably, disturbances, interruptions internally and even externally will find their way into our mind, into our presence. See them for what they are in that present moment and let them go. Thoughts of the weeks past, or tasks we may have completed or may not have completed. Give yourself this present moment to enjoy, to stay from. You're going to take deeper breaths. Still keeping our posture as tall as we can, allowing space for the lungs to open up via the expansion of the rib cage. As we feel the changing of the temperature externally, internally, eyes begin to warm up, tops of feet begin to open the air cools the lungs as we draw it in and let go. Just a few more. to regulate our breathing. Open the eyes if they were closed. So let's shift our bodies forward. Raise the hips off the heels, but still try to keep your tops of your feet pressed into the ground, into your yoga mat. 
tops of them still pressed in. I'm going to try and keep my knees just below my hips, my knees just below my shoulders, and we'll go for our cat cows. Here I want to find a good base, not just between my hands and my feet, but as well as my knees. Okay, everything's really pressed in, but really more so through the hands and the feet. Okay, hands just beneath the shoulders. I go for my cow, my head raises, belly lowers. Inhalation, allowing the ribs to open up. And for my cat, pushing through the tops of the feet and the palms. I rotate my hips back, engage my core, chin to my chest, bending my spine up towards the sky. I exhale. Inhale, hips rotate forward, head rises, belly lowers, keeping those arms nice and straight, feet pressed, hands pressed into the ground. Inhale. Now we'll keep the continuity with the movements. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. As soon as I'm at the peak of my cat, I go right away to the peak of my cow. Now I keep my stuff from shifting my hips too far forward. I keep the rotation mainly in the hips. Butt goes up, head goes up for my cow. When I tuck the butt in, tuck the chin in for my cat. And I'll begin to pick up the speed a bit. Still pressing the tops of the feet and the base of the hands into the mat. And again, like before, we were in Seiza position. Let's go ahead and really press the air out of the lungs for our cat. And take the air deep in for our cow. And have that deepness and shallowness represented in the shape of your body. Push in low. Dipping low. Excellent. Now, here, I'm going to stop and bring my hands ahead, just slightly here, to where I imagine where my shoulders would be. So here, I'm going to dive through, okay? And as I dive through, I'm going to lighten my knees, and I'm going to press through to the tops of my feet. Elbows pointing back towards me, I'm bringing my head nice and low, chin stays in my chest. And we're going to dive through Chaturanga to Up Dog. Tops of my feet down, head is up, and my shoulders slightly rotated back while my legs press off of the ground, hips down, allowing gravity to work the stretch. Excellent. Okay, now let's go ahead and push back for our down dog. Push, 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 push. My shoulders are ahead of my hands. You know, staying on the tops of my feet for a small stretch. I flip the feet over when I feel any discomfort to the balls of my feet. Head in between my arms, arms straight with my spine, slight bend in my knees, my heels lower down towards the ground. And let's go ahead and pedal the feet. I want to heel up, heel down, alternating left and right. some openness in my Achilles, as well as my hamstrings. This, now I'm going to push back again for, this time I'm going to go into a, a plank position. And lower down, Chaturanga. Balls of my feet still to the ground, lowering down, chin to the ground, elbow still pointing back. I flip the feet over. For that low plank. Press it through the tops of the feet, up dog again. 
shoulders back, hips down, and my gaze is forward. Okay, pushing back again. So we're gonna feel that sensation of the tops of the feet stretching out the toes. If you can't, you need to come out soon, one foot at a time. Those that have that range and flexibility can try both at the same time, but don't force it. So my head goes in between my arms, which are straight and in line with my back. Still pressing the heels of the palms, the entire palm to the ground. Fingers evenly stretched. Pedal those feet out. Okay, push back, plank. Balls of the feet still to the ground. Hands beneath the shoulders. Elbows pointing back, chaturanga. Slow, low, lowering to the ground. Top of the feet, one, two to the ground. Up dog. Pushing through and forward. Shoulders back, I'm looking forward. Hips down towards the ground. And back. Top to feet over. One, two. Down dog. Let's pedal the feet out. And again. Slide bend the knee. Raise the heels. Straighten the legs. Staying on the balls of the feet. And last time, lowering down the chaturanga. Flip, top of the feet. Up dog, pressing to the top of the feet. Legs are up, hips down, and I'm looking forward. <sighs> Letting those shoulders open up. Good exhalation. And pushing again, back to down dog, top of the feet, to the balls of the feet, heels lower, but still at a slight bend in both legs. This time I'm looking forward, and I'm gonna bend both knees more. Like I'm springing, like a frog, looking forward to where I'm about to spring, and I'm going to go into a handstand and land my feet just outside my hands. One, two, I'll go first, watch me. And here, just as simple as that. Jumping with both feet, landing with the safe feet. Same two feet. Now, we'll do it all together. Back, bend the legs, heels down towards the ground. Looking forward. Straighten the legs. One, then two, and then three, we hop. Keep those hands on the ground. Here we drop the butt nice and low for our prayer squat. Palms together. And here I'm going to straighten my back. Then slightly tilt it up. Last three breaths, again, calling deep into the base and back of the lungs, expand the rib cage in through the nose. Out through the mouth, pressing those palms together, groin stretch, elbows in between the legs. One more breath, keeping those feet flat to the ground, make that last breath a good breath in through the nose. And out through the mouth. Excellent. And back down we go. Hands, feet. Okay, this time we're gonna go into our tabletop position. And just me, my shoulders, and my knees just me, my hips. Okay, tabletop position. I'm going to pivot through, raising my left hand and my right foot at the same time, and kick through. You notice the pivot 
in my base leg, still keeping a slight bend in my knee with my striking weapon. Arm to my body, hand to my head. I hit it back and try to touch both at the same time. I go right hand, left foot, kick through, via pivoting on my base leg here. Extend, pivot back, hips facing down, lower down, same time. Raise, same time. Kicking through, and retract back, lower both, same time. Now let's begin to incorporate our breath again, okay? I'm gonna draw the breath in as I raise my hand and foot same time. Pause and exhale as I kick through. Thus signifying the force dynamic movement of my weapon. And back, draw the breath in and lower. Exhale, I draw in, inhale as I rise. Exhale, inhale, draw back in, exhale, lower, inhale, rise, exhale, pivot and thrust, inhale, and lower, inhale, In through the nose, out through the mouth. In through the nose, out through the mouth. In through the nose, out through the mouth. In. Just a few more. And time. All right. Let's go ahead and grab some water. Move back in about 30 seconds. We're going to keep the yoga mask down for now. All right. As we come back, we're facing hips up. Going right to a prone position. Okay, so now here, what I will do is simulate just a few break falls again, just the basics here, okay? So my break fall is really when I'm in a standing position, I somehow fall to the ground, be it by force, or even just mere loss of balance on my own. I fall from a standing position to on my back potentially. And how do I mitigate the impact of myself and the ground? So as I fall down, I am trying my best to put my legs in a bent position. So it allows me more access to my glutes, hitting the ground first, rather than those sharp bony points along my spine and definitely my head, okay? So as I go down here, we're gonna start just from the base of already being on our butt. And going down to my back, my back and my hand hit same time, okay? Up we go, and down we go. Now each time I go down, my head doesn't touch the ground until I keep control in my neck and lower down safely, okay? You can rise up. This be a normal sit up, okay? And down I go. So just as I'm striking an object and going through a perceived target here, this target is going to be the ground and my weapon is going to be my palms. So as I hit, that signifies the sharp in, um, exhalation that we go through. And I come forward and down.
can make our way up as best we can either way, okay? If you need to come off to the side, onto your elbow. This is not so much um, an exercise in this case right here. It's a way in how I get up safely, okay? So even dipping onto my side, coming onto my elbow and using it as an aid to come up here, right? This is a bit safer way than me just coming forward, okay? For a sit up. We'll explain a little bit when we go through our technical stand up. So as I come down, and back up we go. You can use the momentum of your arms, swing yourself up, and back down. Now, facing you, what I like to do is cross my hands. Why? So from here, right, what it does allow me to do is come a bit more forward right here, right? And as I'm coming from a standing position, which I'll show in a little while, my hips come down first, right? My butt hits the ground first, feeding my bent legs, and I'm hollowing out my body, keeping my chin to my chest so it doesn't strike. And at the last moment with timing, right? As my butt and back hit, my hands have a place to come from, right? Rather than just on my side, and I slap the ground with not much momentum. From here, I have the momentum. Good exhalation on the fall down because inevitably the impact alone will drive air from your lungs. So I don't want to wait for the impact to drive the air from my lungs alone. I want to actively go with it, allowing a bit of elasticity and flow. And back up. My hands nice and wide. I keep my hands about hips height, which is where my initial impact should be, right at my glutes. Hands in, chin tucked. We go down. Excellent. Now, time. Here we're going to go into our technical stamp, so I'll face you for now. We're going to lean onto my side, and I stand on one foot, okay? Now, normally I go one foot behind one knee. It's just to make sure that I'm keeping myself in a loaded position, okay? With my technical stand-up, or some uh, for my combat base. So, my standing base, as it were, is me going through my combat base and coming all the way to standing position combat base. is me staying somewhat grounded for grounded combat. Okay, so what I'm doing, I'm leaning to my side, almost in a lazy fashion, hands to my head, arms to my body, from here, and beneath my shoulder. Notice that I shifted the width from which my hand is away from my body, because if I just stood up here, right, my base is a little too wide, I don't have the greatest balance. So here I slip that hand beneath me so that when I rise up, kick forward, and stand up. I can do it with a bit more base, okay? I can do the same thing on the way back down. Bend the legs, hand down, arms still to my body, kick forward, and come back down to that same position, okay? So now the other side. Instead of coming forward, off to the side, okay? So on my left elbow, base on my right foot, okay? Hands to my head. As I come forward, sneak that hand beneath the shoulder and raise up, kicking forward. Those my toe and heel facing east west. Now, this is the gauge distance between what's in front of me. When I retract my leg, I need to extend my arm that I have available. Notice that pivot in the foot as I come to my standing position. Okay, we'll go back down again. Bend the legs. Okay, what do we look at the legs? Not our back, so I'm not doing this. I'm coming down to the ground. Engage the legs. Down and here, I kick forward. Notice what my base foot now does, right? Turns from sideways to forward. So my hips can now face forward. And down I go. Can come back down? Other side. Because here's a deal here. If I would have just come forward here, 
I'm coming straight headlong into potential danger, okay? With just my hands to protect me. Won't quite be enough here, right? I need to get the most powerful limbs in place, my legs, okay? Some of them straight and me laying on my butt, they're not in the most effective place. So again, I'm gonna lean onto my side, making my opposite side leg lighter, okay? Sitting on my right hip and my right elbow, hand to my head, arm to my body. Upright position, kick forward, and extend with the arm to replace the leg. Back down, do this a few more times each side. Down, I kick forward again, and lower the hips down towards the ground easily. And you stay on your yoga mat, I'll face you for now. And here, I straighten both legs, I go back down to prone position. Okay, lean to the side while rising up. Okay, using my elbow as a post, and then my hand, okay? Left elbow, right foot post. Okay, hands to my head, arms to my body, sit upright. By doubling the length of my arm, I raise up, kick forward. I retract the leg while extending the arm. Maybe even extend the arm first, just to be super straight. Down. Keep forward, lower down the leg, lower down the body. Right elbow. Base of left foot, up, kick forward, extend forward, and back. Okay, let's go for two more each side. Spoken before, through my thrust is where my exhalation will come through. Have more exertion, power. Extend, blow it down. Lay in the opposite way. Base, opposite knee. Sorry, opposite elbow, opposite foot. Raise up. Hand beneath my shoulder. I kick forward. And extend. Opposite arm. There's my exhalation. Do the top of my strike and I lower down. Two more. Lean to the side, into my head, arm to my body, face on one foot, hand beneath my shoulder, kick forward and retract. And you know, lower, exhale, strike. Inhale, lower. All the way down. Last one. Face up. Opposite foot faces. Opposite elbow. Hand beneath the shoulder. And I raise up. Kick forward. And face up. And exhale. And time. Okay, we're going to grab some water. We'll move our yoga mats out of the way. We'll put some standing position strikes in about 20 seconds. All right, now before I aim my camera up to an upright position, here, where we're going to, I just want you to notice where my feet are, okay? So here's a, another good warm up here, okay? Just something that, um, you know, that I would definitely do before I go into like some dynamic striking because it employs me not just how to engage in the pivot, right? My foot, but also stretching my hips and my hamstrings, okay? So, done this a bit before, I'm going to find a wall, okay? I'm going to simulate a wall first, okay? So where I'm, say my hands are on the wall, I'm not leaning onto the wall, putting my weight onto it, just enough weight 
to support my body in upright position. And what I'm doing here is I'm pivoting with one foot, pivoting one way, pivoting the other, pivoting one way, pivoting the other. What the other leg is doing is creating pendulum movement, left and right, left and right. Now what I'm trying to do is I am inhaling as my leg lowers and exhaling as it rises. In. I'm trying to find that continuity. Don't worry about right or wrong here. Just <clears throat> feel how it relates to the momentum of your swing. Meanwhile, the base leg is turning heel up, heel down, heel up, heel down, heel up, heel down, heel up. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, right? Along that base of the movement, right? To really carry through with that exhalation. Okay, now, be facing the wall. I'm kicking both directions my leg goes. My toes are facing up. Trying to find that breath through there. Now, if that begins to like um, challenge the breathing a bit more, okay, we can find an exhalation through the opening of the hips and inhalation through the closing, okay? So, okay, so we're gonna go for that. Pick which one it is you're gonna go for. You're gonna go for a count of 20. Starting with the left leg, keeping nice and light on the base leg as far as the heel is concerned, driving through all five toes on that base leg. Ready and go. One, two, three. Keep it a little high with each one. Toes are up and foot is flexed. And more. And switching legs. Again, I'm trying to find that fluidity. Maybe this feet will shift a little bit, but I'm trying not to lean too heavy on the wall. Okay. Spine is nice and straight, allowing space between yourself and the wall so you don't make any contact with your foot. And go. Or you can go half time. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Or in X, 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 two more. Toes facing up each way. And at 10 is time. Okay, here we go. Now, feet slightly wide and hips width apart. Let's go ahead and add our punches this time. A frame in the front, B frame laterally, punching across, raising the heel with each step. And again, adding a perceived target, okay? Using the depth perception of my eyes, or a particular space in front of me. I don't want that deficit to be an object that's far out of my reach, because that's going to encourage me to what? Lean towards it, okay? Thus compromising my balance and base. So if I need to get closer, I'll just shift closer towards it before I actually go for my strike. I don't want to be in an unbalanced position in this case. Keep turning. Allow the spine to 
twist, the hips to twist, but still really pressing through the ball, the foot, and through the ground. And so much that there's not too much friction along the skin, hands to the head, onto the body each time I thrust to the opposite arm. Keeping that slight bend, don't straighten the arm out all the way. About 10 more. Twisting and time. Now I'm gonna bring my feet from my neutral position to my combat standing two o'clock position. Lead toe facing straight ahead, back toe spacing at a 45 degree angle. That's if I'm a right hand, right handed person. Switch left handed 10 o'clock position. My feet with hands at the clock, it'd be about 10 o'clock. Okay, I'm switching to my dominant side, my right. My left hand goes forward, jab, right hand cross. Now here, going straight away into a kick. This is gonna be a round kick. Step with my left, kick with my right. Bring my arm right alongside to try and carry that pirouette all the way through to my hips facing forward again, okay? Jab, cross again. Step left, kicking with my right. Now, quick detail that we can add as we go along here, okay? Because we've seen this similar scenario before. When I step, with my left foot, I am going to turn my foot already at a 45 degree angle, okay? So now my feet are both relatively facing at 45 degree angles and just on different planes, okay? Now, I'm not gonna lower my heel down, I'm gonna stay on the ball of my foot, A, so I can have pivot rotation and add more force to my round kick. So my leg not only goes up, but it begins to go diagonal and then eventually horizontal. So as I step, I'm already halfway through my pivot, so I may have better balance throughout the movement. I swing my right arm down as my right leg rises up. A bit more fluidity into my round kick, okay? Let's keep going, jab, cross. Step left, at an angle. As I step forward, what happens to my back leg? It lightens. I begin to stay on both balls of my feet at that moment in time, facing with one and pushing with the other, okay? Let's keep going for now. So angle for an upwards more position. Okay, jab, cross. Step, kick. Notice my heel comes slightly towards my butt, and then extends. So I have different fulcrums working all together to land with a bit more force and balance throughout my strike, okay? Sideways view. Jab cross. Step left. Swing the right. Jab cross. Step at an angle with my left. Raising my right foot off at that moment in time. Now with momentum. Swinging along. Okay. And time. Now, same thing, just the opposite side this time. Okay. As I come off my right kick. Now, again. If we can't get that full 360, we'll just go ahead for a 180. Land that foot in the same place. Now I'm going to use that foot, right cross, left hook. And from here, when I switch now, right, my foot is already at a 45 degree angle, okay? My back leg is already at a 45 degree angle. So I step back to my left, I push forward with my right, my foot's already in that position. It just now stepped ahead of my left. So now again, I'm a bit closer. I'm already round, uh, rotated into my pivot just slightly so I can get around quicker. I go back full turn, step back into my stance. South ball position, or sorry, my side position, jab cross. Right kick. Right arm comes down as the right leg rises up. Cross, hook, switch. This foot turns. Most, if I can't see my toes, you can see my knee facing out 45 degrees. My knee should be in line with my toes. My weight shifts from my left to my right. I kick through and I step back into my stance. Okay, putting all those together. 
Another two minutes. Jab, cross. Step, kick, cross, hook, switch, one, two, kick. All right, we've seen similar before, but now what we're trying to do is make sure that we point those toes out 45 degrees each time. Okay, and again, with my knees pointing, that signifies where my toes are pointing. Jab, cross, step, kick, full turn, cross, hook, one, two, step back into your stance. Jab, cross. Cross, hook. That same hissing sound, right? Coming through with teeth slightly closed. I can't breathe like I would in a like more yogic position, right? Where I need force through that resistance in the airways. Step. Step back, step forward, already at a 45 degree angle, thus creating more torque. For that kick, step back into your position. Under a minute. Step. Step back, step deeper forward into that strike. Okay, now we're getting to our switch, our, our quick switch. Step, kick. Switch. All right, a bit more of a quicker movement. Okay, last 20 seconds, I'll angle down towards my feet so we can see that quick movement. Jack box. Step. Hook. Notice I bring my foot back less, but I bring my back foot forward more. Last one. Going to our sprawl, dropping back down to that deep squat, keeping my spine nice and tall. Where I lift my legs, not my back, so I keep my back straight, bending my legs, hands down, and I kick back. Hips come down to come right back up with elasticity and momentum to come back to my standing position. Watch first, kick back. Allow myself two good exhalations through each propelled movement. Okay, ready and go. Nine more. Be close, feet apart. Hips come down, back up with that same elastic momentum. Upright position. Really try to draw those knees into the chest for an upright position. Stay straight, last two. And time. Okay, let's go ahead and grab some water. Back in in 30 seconds. All right. So here we're going to go into a series of round movements here. So I'm gonna begin to open up the hips a bit more, driving through the heels, not just the feet, but the heels of the palms as well. Okay, but it's really of course through all the sole of the foot and the palm of the hand. So I rise up for my bridge. And as I rise, my arm comes across my body my hips come up, but I'm trying to keep the weight of both legs. Keeping the heels down. And I switch. And just little by little, maybe I can't extend my hips up too far initially. Just work your way in. 
both feet press equally into the ground as best you can. Hands just meet the shoulder from my base, palm faces down as I extend back. Exhale, rise. Inhale, lower. Exhale. Inhale. Keep that arm really straight. Hand beneath the shoulder still. Draw those hips up as the hand goes across the body. Palm facing down. Still trying your best to keep weight evenly distributed between both feet. Press into the ground as you rise up. And time. My hand doesn't come back down where I'm at, my beginning of my standing base, okay, or my technical stand up. Hand to my head, arm to my body, kick forward. Pitted my hips down. I come to a rising position. Okay. Now, here we're going to go back into our tabletop position and add a bit more propulsion this time. Okay, tabletop. You can rest the knees on the ground for the moment in time. But then what I'm doing is I'm raising my heels, oh, sorry, my knees off the ground. And here I want to get a bit more into an arm balance position. Not too different than we did in the beginning, where we hop forward and just lower our hips down floating the feet outside the hands, okay? So here's some of the motion, right? I'm landing both feet. This time I'm only landing one. Okay, so I'm gonna hop up in the sky, both legs, but one at a time. Left up, right up. Landing on my left, kicking through with my right, opposite side. We're pretending we're going in slow motion as our base depends on it. I need to keep good core control, especially as I rise up into that arm balance. Leaving a good pivot, drawing that leg up to the sky without touching the foot to the ground. Then landing on it, kicking through with the opposite. Notice the load. As I load off my bent leg that's already based onto the ground, pushing, leaping, and thrusting through sideways. Landing soft, just in the ball of the foot. 30 seconds. You can't get enough, a whole lot of air. I just want to switch one foot with the other. And it's just here. Two more. And time. Look where we already are. Beginning of our standing base, we try to leg extend the arm and up we rise. Okay, quick sip of water back in on the ground this time with our yoga mats down. Now, what we'll do here is come back to that prone base, back to our prone position, be the base of our yoga mats, 
heads down, hands down. We're gonna find our plow position again, okay? So, driving. So here's uh, more so for those that, um, you know, maybe just begun to move. I want to draw my thighs in close, feet in close, and I can either point the feet or put my feet into half point, okay? Really trying to get the base of my spine down towards the ground, head down to the ground, but I want to tuck my chin into my chest just a bit. Now from here, raising my legs first, then my hips. Keep my legs straight as I can, keep my thighs and feet together. And then from there, using the aid of my hands if I need to, push back into plow. Keep those legs locked, straight. And I'm not putting any pressure on my neck. Okay, even if I can't. Bring my legs all the way to horizontal. I'd rather keep pressure off of my neck and maintain it along the middle of my back and shoulders. And then we lower back down. One vertebrae at a time, starting from the top of the spine until my hips lower. Use your hands as a base if you need to. Low, slow, 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 slow. So the small of the back meets the ground, and then the legs come last. Excellent. Inhale, raise the legs. And exhale, raise the hips, lower the legs. No pressure on the neck. And inhale. We lower the back down towards the ground. And exhale. Lowering the legs. Three more. Inhale, raise. Exhale, lower. Inhale, raise. Vertebrae by vertebrae, exhale lower. No pressure on the neck. Inhale. Lower. Exhale. Now from here, we're gonna roll into a standing position from the plow. Now let's not put too much into just the plow alone. I wanna allow momentum here, if I need it, to come into that rising position my combat base. So where's my combat base? I start my legs straight. I roll one foot behind one knee. When I roll forward with my hands up, standing position. Same foot comes back down. Same knee comes back down. I roll over that same chin to go back. And now I'm mid-back, but on my glute. Straight legs down. Break fall, plow. Switch legs, left foot behind right knee. Rolling forward, my hands rise. Up. Same foot back down. Same knee, same glute. Straighten the legs, hands down, plow. Right foot behind left knee, rolling, up we go, and standing, just with one leg. Same foot comes back down, last two, foot behind one foot, knee down, glute down. Remember, we can lean forward to mitigate a bit of the impact as we lower, 
Hands down, plow. Switch legs, flip behind knee, lower down slowly and lower my hip, lower my glute, then I swell my back. And back down, butt down, and time. Now, what we'll do is we're gonna close by turning on the opposite side. Let's go into a cat cow position. Okay, again, pressing the top of the feet to the mat. Let's start at the base of the mat. Really pressing the top of the feet to the mat. And let's go for some rotations. Let's start counterclockwise. Hands. Met evenly to the ground, even the fingers as well. Evenly splayed apart, tops of the feet press into the mat and switching directions. Circular motion. And you're just opening the wrists up. It's too much weight. Sit back more than you lean forward. Excellent. So now let's sit back for our child's pose, bring our hips back towards our heels, walk the hands forward as we elongate the spine. Three more breaths. Only air deep into the base of the lungs, the back of the lungs, expand the rib cage. Still walking forward, still sitting back. And release. Here we'll walk ourselves to an upright position through our Cesar. Tops of feet still to the mat. And in hand. Spine's tall. You can find that moment of presence through the breath. Good recognition, even allowance. Allowing the breath Breathe in vitality, recognition of the moment. As it's how we find our presence. Let our body, our mind, and spirit. Happy Monday, all. Thank you for joining. See you again on Wednesday and Saturday. Thank you.